Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Welcome to the sweltering days Jeez. of summer. It's the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. <laughs> That's what the heat does to you. I tell you. Holy ya. smokes. Well, I hope that you've got a beer that will take the sting out of some of the heat. I have a perfect beer for this time of year. It's a Cezanne, a farmhouse ale. Now, what's the difference between a farmhouse ale and a Cezanne? He asked. Is that a rhetorical question? Actually, it is a little bit. <laughs> there really isn't any difference. There's no difference at all. The, the terms are interchangeable. Okay. And I actually researched this because the thought occurred to me the other night. And I thought, well, really and truly, what's the difference between the two? And it turns out there really isn't any. Okay. Now, I'm, on the other hand, a beer to guard is different. I mean, you, there are some shadings that you can get to one end of the scale or another, and you can begin to call things differently. But the whole idea of a farmhouse ale, or saison, was this is what we have on tap, mm -hmm. on hand, not on tap. We're going to brew with what we got. It's for quenching one's thirst during the summer. Those French farmers, you know, they work hard 30 hours a week with a month off in August. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> we just lost our French, French audience. <laughs> French audience. <laughs> our friend Philip in France is going, I'm not watching you guys anymore. Anyway, this is my take on the season. <laughs> The long and short of it. <laughs> so, so let's talk about it before we drink it. Okay. Uh, before you open it with your beautiful basic yes. brewing uh, bottle opener here, which you get free if you me. buy any of our DVD combos. That's right. <clears throat> or if you want to buy just the opener itself, it's you can go to basicbrewingshop.com and uh, check that out. And uh, if you get a DVD combo with cheese, we can't ship that. <laughs> it's against the law. There's plenty of cheese in our yeah. DVDs, <laughs> especially if you're up in Wisconsin. <laughs> So what are you reading there? What is that you're reading? I'm out reading of? out of our logbook. Our, <laughs> this is nothing, our <laughs> let's turn it into an infomercial. <laughs> Basic. Wait, there's more. Uh, but wait, those are. Uh, does it slice and dice? It, yes, our brewer's well, logbook, which you can you can log up to 50 batches of beer. That's right. Also available on our site. Okay, now right. shameless plug over. Absolutely. So what we have here is the second writings from a party guile. Okay. So the first runnings will be a different show at a different time. Right. We just actually bottled that beer, but I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm going to tell you about this beer. So this is the second runnings. Um, I got about three gallons of beer out of it. Out okay. of it. So I sparged. It was just simply the sparge water. Right. And I took the second runnings. I. Uh, so was the first runnings about equal to the second runnings? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Essentially the same yield, but I'm not a very scientific <laughs> brewer, meaning. I didn't like measure and try to figure out exactly what my right. yield was on each you one. You get what you get. You get what you get, the way I do it, which is why I could never be a commercial brewer. <laughs> um, at any rate, though, the grain bill is 10 pounds of Maris Otter, 5 pounds of Light Munich, and 8, pound, or eight, yeah, eight, pounds? eight ounces of light brown sugar. So eight. that's not the grain bill, but the fermentables. Right. And uh, so I mashed all that together, took the first runnings, then added the, so in the second runnings, I added the brown sugar. I okay. got a little ahead of myself. Okay. Okay, so now I've got my three gallons of second runnings that I've got on the boil. I add the brown sugar to it. I added a half ounce of Chinook at 60 minutes. Just for bittering. Just for bittering. That's all that's in it. And I also flavored it with a half a teaspoon of cardamom, I mean coriander, mm. a quarter teaspoon of cor cardamom, and cardamom is very strong. You have to be careful with that. You can really overdo cardamom in a hurry. So, word of caution. And eight, count them, eight black peppercorns. Oh. Uh, and then at bottling. Oh, we, the, the spoiler alert, you, pit, you pitched. That's right. Uh, you pitched uh, the Belle Saison yeast, the dry yeast. Right. And then, then at bottling time, you primed with honey and a mystery ingredient mystery that we caught ingredient. on camera. Here you go. So in order, so this is a saison, and um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this or not, but it's flavored with cardamom, coriander, and black pepper at the moment, and I used bel saison yeast. But I want to get some orange in there somewhere, and so I decided that I would do it by spiking it with Cointreau. So I'm going to use a half a cup of Cointreau, which is a very high quality uh, orange liqueur from somewhere in France, Angers, France. 
which I'm going to assume is the south of France because that sounds more romantic. <laughs> so this is a quart. This is a half a cup of Cointreau at bottling. Yum. And now our bottling uh, priming sugar is good and sanitized. It's been with over there be, with beer. With beer, it's been over there summering along. Because if you use water, you'll dilute your your beer. That's true. Although I always have, I've never worried about it. But I, I like that idea. Never really, never really thought about it. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to stir it up. And I need something to stir it up with. It's sanitized. You got to sanitize. You got a tub over there full of sanitizing stuff. I do. But you know what I did is I I got my. Um, just use your hand. My... Just use your hand. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and get the tennis racket. <laughs> this is sanitized. That's what I was looking for. So I'm going to stir this up. But I don't want to get it frothy, you know. I mean, I'm not yeah. trying to degas a six gallon thing of wine here. I just want to get all that uh, priming sugar and that Cointreau evenly distributed. And you took a hydrometer reading and we tasted it and it was good. Mm -hmm. Very dry. I mean, boy, that fermented all the way out. And I can't remember the original gravity on it, so I can't tell you what the ABV is, but I think it's about 7%, if, if memory serves. Let me hurt my memory a little bit more. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I got it. Okay, so now I'm going to bottle. And you sanitize your bottles in the dishwasher. Yes, I use, I use the system where you... Your bottles are clean, they're just not sanitized. Right. And then I wash them uh, with no soap, but in, in a hot water, a high temperature wash, and a high temperature dry, which is really important. Yeah. And so they'll, they will uh, get up to 160 degrees and stay that way for quite a long time. And so now I have completely sanitized bottles. Easy. Easy. You just have to plan ahead. Just Don't let your son Come in, eat lunch, put his dirty dishes in on top of your clean bottle. That, <laughs> that'll ruin your day. And it has happened. No soap, no rinse aid. No. Nope. Well, there you go. And there you go. And so there's my bottles. And now it's just a simple matter of bottling, and you don't need to watch that, so go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Quantro so and yeah. all those spices. I can't wait. Let's that's how I got the. That's how I got the orange into it because I wanted a little bit of that, you know. And so instead of bitter orange peel, I use Quantro. Now, were you concerned at all about any sweetness or sugars in the Quantro? Yes. Over priming the beer. I was in that I cut back the honey a little bit mm. um, on purpose, and I cut it back perhaps a little bit more than I would have. Again. Uh, I wasn't too worried about it because there was so little, the Quantro, there was so little for the volume right. that I, I, just, I just didn't worry about it. And in fact, I don't think it's been a problem, but I'm anxious for you to taste this. Oh. Tell me what you think. Perfectly. Oh, it's beautiful and clear and orange. Cheers. Cheers. So this is the Farmington Farmhouse Ale. Mmm. Smells Cezanne. <laughs> it does. You know, I've been accused of that, actually. <laughs> My wife will occasionally. That's just natural. <laughs> but the head's nice on it. Oh, yeah. It's spicy. Yep. And the orange comes through in the background. It's not mm -hmm. too powerful, but uh, it blends in well with the spices. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, I get, a, I get the little pepper, the little black peppercorn, mm -hmm. you get that. And I think maybe it's from the pepper, but I get a, t I get a little bit of like almost a smoky flavor. Yeah, I do too. And with the bright, with the bright uh, uh, flavors of the citrus and the, and the spices, I get there's a, there's a little bit of like a, like a smoky thing going on. There's a lot going on in this beer. Mmm. That's delicious. Perfectly done. Thank you, sir. Yes. That, that, that came out really good. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> surprised. 
No. Normally I'm faking it. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it. <laughs> Sell it. <laughs> no, it's very good. Uh, and boy, uh, I don't know if I'd want to sit outside when it's 100 degrees and drink it. Uh, but it would sure be nice after I'd been outside and coming into the air conditioning. Yeah, I think it's about a seven, it's a pretty big beer. It's about 7% beer. Um, mm. But it's got that, it, it reminds me a lot of Tank 7. If you're a Tank 7 mm -hmm. fan out there, it's yeah. got that going on. There is some sweetness in it, but it, when it finishes, it finishes really dry, at least right. in my palate. And yeah. so from that, it reminds me a lot of an Orval. It's got that kind of dry... Yeah. Um, it's not as funky as an no, Orval. Uh -uh. No, no, no. But yeah, you're right. It is kind of a... And the carbonation level is good. Mm -hmm. So, nice job. Yeah. I, this mostly reminds me of Tank 7. A little heavier. A little heavier. A little bigger beer, I think. Or heavier. I don't know if it's more alcoholic or not. Mm. But... but um, very nice. Thanks. So, there you go. Well, we bottled, uh, as Steve said, we bottled the big beer. Uh, and I guess we could tell them, we could preview it. We could preview it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an imperial stout with some cherry mead mixed in. So, that's, that's right. all we're going to say. That's it. But that's going to be in the next few months because that's got to age a little while before it uh, gets... It's a winter warmer. Yes. You could also run a diesel tractor on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <ya. laughs> So with that, cheers. Cheers. And uh, happy brew. Happy brew. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. You know, if you were to put a cup in, you would overprime and it would be horrible. <laughs>